this next review is the Neil 47 trimaran. Neil have a reputation for building fast trimarans for long voyages. The 47 is the bigger brother of the 45 and let's go and see a look if this performance trimaran lives up to expectation. The helm position of the Neil 47 is well protected and the instruments and lines easy to handle from this area. The instrument displays are clear and you have full access to the bow thruster, engine controls and navigational equipment. I was slightly concerned that there was no place to stow the lines next to a staircase. This would provide a trip hazard for us. Visibility was good from the helm, however, as you can see, there are no handrails or grab points at all on the coach roof. This is something we would definitely want to remedy if we were to take this boat offshore. We would also have liked to have seen flush mounted hatches here to stop the tripping hazard. We were, however, super pleased to see a dedicated life raft stowage position in the transom. Good work, Neil, on that. So overall, a bit of a mixed bag here with Neil. We're going to award this a six. There are some improvements to be made. I cannot tell you how many ways I dislike this boat. <laughs> it's nothing, look, for, to, the trimaran, schmimaran. My problem with this piece is that you just, I mean, I'm a joinery nerd. The joinery in this is Beep. shocking. I wouldn't take this from Ikea. Show me, show me. Is this a bedroom? Yes. But look, this is really poor quality, right? I've heard such different things on the internet, and I'm saying different so that I don't get. How is it poor quality? How is this any different to the light of the room? You can tell. It's I, all I can't. Okay, well, look, well, look, for instance. Look, there's little marks up here. It's so flimsy that it's marking when someone's obviously got a screwdriver up here to get this panel off. Look, okay, look, got yep. this? Yep. Terrible. And look, look behind me. See this? These are shelves. Yeah. Oh, look, at look at the thickness of this oh, exactly. Look. Yeah. Look at the thickness of that. Yeah. Look. Yeah. Look. That is one centimetre of mastic where it hasn't fitted properly, so they've mastic full. Look. Even I can see all that. Yeah. Much here. This boat would not last an Atlantic crossing. It would be, it'd be wrecked. Right, head down here and I'll show you other things that I think are shocking. But look, lumps out of the woodwork. Yeah. And look at all this. It's all unfinished. Look, look at the finish on that. Finish is shocking. We actually found steps that were falling apart where they hadn't been bolted through, simply screwed. This to us is totally unacceptable, even if you are rushing a boat for a boat show. If you look at the rails here, the teak still has mastic smeared all over it. This is not simply a question of a rush job, this is just poor workmanship. A piece of masking tape will have avoided this area. Overall, this boat, we were really seriously unimpressed with the build quality. Things were falling down, broken bits were hidden behind lockers. We're awarding the Neil 47 a one out of 10 for build quality. The only reason it's getting a one is because I can't award zero. Let's take a look at the interior design of the new 47. This takes into account everything that would make this boat comfortable and easy to live on. So we look at everything from aesthetics, headroom, ventilation, all that kind of thing. Let's start with the cockpit. The cockpit is a really spacious area, unsurprisingly, for such a beamy trimaran. You've got both a dining area and also more of a kind of casual lounging area and then direct access to the helm position. And then inside you have the saloon which communicates directly with the cockpit so they've tried to create kind of an indoor outdoor uh, living area which is nice. And then you've got obviously a lot of natural sunlight inside. The ventilation could be improved upon. You've got just the one opening hatch forward of that galley and otherwise there's not much else going on in terms of ventilation. 
Behind this panel you have the main cabin, again just with the one opening hatch. And I was a bit surprised to find this here, I was uh, not expecting to find the main cabin essentially connecting with the saloon, but it works and it's a really nice space as well. Overall this entire area is quite spacious and practical. Now let's take a look at that forward facing nav station. So the good point about it is that that nav station is brilliant. <laughs> So forward facing nav station and it goes like this. Let's now take a look at the outer hulls and this is where things get really problematic. The poor build quality was particularly evident here but we've already discussed that so let's move on. The accommodations down here are extremely small and cramped and there's not really much nod to styling either. It doesn't look particularly welcoming and it's certainly not a comfortable area to be putting your guests. Overall I'm going to give this a 6 out of 10. The cockpit is lovely, the saloon is spacious and the master cabin is fine but the guest accommodations are just subpar. So let's look at the statistics for the Neil 47. It comes in at 14.2 meters in length so that's just about 47 foot flat. The beam is 8.3 meters. That's really fat. And be aware that when you're trying to get this into a double marina berth, that's going to be a little bit of a struggle. The Neil 47 draws 1.6 meters with the central keel. The propeller is unskegged. It comes with a huge mainsail of 70 square meters and a 50 meter genera. So we've got a fairly large sail area there. This is coupled with the weight of the boat, which it just it weighs in at just over 10 tons. So for a 47 foot trimaran, that is super light. There is no polar diagram that we could find, but the literature says 10 knot cruising speed is easy and off the wind she is going to make 15 to 20 knots. So this is a light, fast boat. So for performance, 8 out of 10. Now let's take a look at value for money of the Neil 47. The basic price is 429,000 euros. That's 481,000 US dollars or 384,000 UK pounds. Obviously this does not include any of the local taxes. Fully spec, that's actually going to jump up to 535. The list of extras is in line with other extras that you would find on other manufacturers lists. However, most customers I imagine will go for the option of the fancy carbon rig as this is a light performance boat and that adds about 30,000 to the overall price. So value for money for a 47 foot boat we're not quite sure where to place this so we're going to give it an average 5 out of 10. Well that was the Neil 47 Trimaran. Um, I'm going to put a couple of disclaimers in first. Yeah. Firstly, uh, we talked to someone after the show and they said that they had rushed that boat out and so it wasn't um, up to scratch. So that was that. And this is my analogy. I was talking to you about my analogy yesterday. Um, it's a little bit like being really good all the way through college and then not revising for the exam and stuffing up the exam. We can only review what we saw. Yeah. Um, and I stand by the comments I made during the video and I stand by what I'm about to say about this boat um, in the coming minutes. <laughs> I will also say that in, in, in continuing with the college analogy, we will allow a reset on this. And I think when we get to Annapolis, yeah. we will go and see another Neil yeah. to see if this was just an anomaly. An anomaly. Yeah. Although this is the second Neil I've seen. Well, it's the first thing I've seen, okay. and it's the first time we've like properly inspected one. Yes. So okay. let's just say that this is the first, right. our first impressions. So let's go with the positives. The positives about this boat, Therese. The positives. What do you reckon? It goes really, really fast. It is. It is built for performance. Yeah. It, it is a performance uh, multi-hull. It, it is. Literally, I, I spent a lot of time after looking at this boat, reading it, reading what they've done, reading what they've done, how they've reinforced it, how the basic principles of having a trimaran mean that you've got, you know, downwind, one very slim hull in yeah. the water, 
um, a lot of stability, a lot of speed. You don't have the kind of you have the kind of performance. You know, you don't get the kind of the, the performance of a of a catamaran you know, going downwind or what, upwind. What do you mean? Well, basically, because it's 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 essentially a monohull without riggers. Yeah. Um, so you know you, you, the performance is fantastic, and yeah. the way it's built, there's, you know, if you read the literature about the boat, that it is, um, you know, that, I didn't quite understand it, but something like the the four stay is built into the into the deck, or you know, it's all integrated, very lightweight, yeah. ten tons for a forty seven foot trimaran. That mm. is crazy, crazy yeah. light, yeah. crazy light. So performance wise, mm. it goes, it yeah. goes. We could not find a polar diagram for this boat because it is so new. However, we found a website that says that it should happily cruise along at 10 knots mm. and 15 to 20 knots is not out of the question. Mm. So from the point of view of uh, performance, that I think is its, you know, its, its major selling point. Yeah. Other things that I like about it, um, I do like the fact that the, that forward facing chart table yeah. Helm station. Yeah. It is always useful on long passages to have a forward facing helm station. And one criticism that we didn't level at several of the other catamarans we have reviewed is that they don't have a dedicated forward facing helm. And, it, you know, one of the ones we saw, I think it was the Naughty Tech, had one over in the galley. Mm. You know, um, the other, another one had, um, you know, one at 45 degrees to the windows. That's fine for a couple of hours, but if you want days at, days on end and night watches, you want to be looking forward and comfortable. Yeah, yeah. So that helm station, central, it's good. Yeah. Other things that I liked about it, life rail position was good. Mm -hmm. um, helm position was good. Mm -hmm. So those are the positives. Um, anything do you want to add to the positives about this boat? Look, I'm going to be brutally honest, it didn't float my boat, as it were, okay. at all. I, I wasn't a fan. Okay. I... I'm going to choose my words carefully, maybe I won't. Um, <laughs> I have yet to see a boat ever as poorly put together as this boat. I've never seen anything so poorly put together. And I know that you can make excuses about they rushed it, they rushed it, they rushed it, but there is and there were, as this is the second one I've seen, there was one in Charleston that we saw. Okay. So. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. It is not a well together, it wasn't, well, this boat was not well put together. There are certain things that I thought were inexcusable. Mm. Um, the, f you know, one thing, the amount of mastic they had to put in gaps between the, the hull and and literally the work surfaces. Yeah. These boats are not cut by men with saws. They're cut with, you know, five axis milling machines, mm. laser jigs. These should click together like models. They should not, mm. there should not be that level mm. of discrepancy between fitting parts. Mm. That's the first thing. So mm. the, the poor fit of it, I don't understand in 2019 how it can fit together so poorly. Mm. It should go together. It's CAD design. These are computer aided boats. That's the mm. first thing. Um, Second thing, it was just so poorly presented. Yeah, it yeah. is poorly presented. Mm. Like literally, things already broken on the yeah. boat. But things that I don't even see how the excuse of it being rushed through to get to the boat show, if that is indeed the excuse, that is just one thing that we heard. I don't see how that justifies the like things literally falling off the walls. Okay, so the one thing you know we did film is that one of the steps coming up out of the the, the smaller holes yeah. was was broken. Yeah, it pulled out of the fiberglass, but it had just been screwed through. But this is what I mean exactly, and that that wasn't the only one. Like there was a shot also we saw of you um, stepping down, and both steps you can see they actually sag as you put your weight into them, and it's not like you're a heavy guy. Oh, yeah, <laughs> bit. But, but so the point is, these things need to backing plates, and they need to be bolted through, that because they're load bearing. Yeah. Um, okay, well listen, we scored that boat a 1 out of 10 um, for build quality. And the only reason it scored 1 out of 10 is because I could not score it zero. Genuinely. I, the boat is an expensive, expensive piece of kit and it is meant for longshore, offshore, long distance offshore passages and I'd be terrified to take one offshore I in that condition. I wouldn't even want to... Well, when when you're on something where you're scared to go down two steps because they're going to break underneath you yep. then at what point do you say oh yeah <clears> I'm, I'm okay putting my life in the pans of this boat like yep. you're essentially putting your life at risk when you take a boat out yep. that 
if you, if you can't even put a step in, then how are you supposed to build a boat that is going to keep you safe at sea? I just, it blows my mind. Well, let's let's move away from the build quality because I think, you know, I could hammer on about this. Well, and also it's fairly self-explanatory. Yeah. Um, other things that I didn't really like about it, and this is, so the kind of the big hole, the, yeah, the, the, middle, main, hole. the middle hole, yeah. Like the accommodation, whether you like the accommodation up high, I can see the benefit of it. I can see, I can see how having a master cabin like that is fantastic. Yeah. Um, we didn't actually video the engine room. We couldn't get to it, but you know, there's meant to be a walkthrough engine room that kind of is meant to have all the, a garage with loads of stuff in it, and that I can see as a bonus. Mm. The problem is that once you get out of the middle hull, those two smaller hulls are almost. They are literally their delivery, their delivery crew accommodation. Mm. Like the shot of the the, the berths. I mean, this is it's just the physics of the hull. Yeah, they're very very narrow outer yeah. holes. Yeah, um, and you know the berths are they're meant to be doubles. And I looked at the literature, the pictures of the literature, like showing what it's meant to be like in there. And there's some girl walking through like with paintings on the wall, <laughs> and I'm like, that's not what we saw. <laughs> it's almost a coffin berth. I yeah. think there's one opening hatch. They're yeah. very narrow, even at the widest point. Yeah. They get narrower as they go into. And you can have berths forward of that. Yeah. And then the problem is that logistically to get out of those outer holes, you have to. That's where your wet room is. Mm. And there's a wardrobe, but there's you know if you're on long passage, you've got to go down there. That 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 is not a good place to be, mm. as as crew, mm. in, in one of those outer holes. It, it would be it would be a miserable existence. Yeah, and there is no toilet there either. Yeah. So you know, you, you've got to go back. <laughs> it's it's a bit nuts, and I can see what they're trying to do. And you know what? If I wanted to go, you know, to hooning around the cans racing. I'd be all over that like a like a rash. Well, not that particular one because no, but but on a trimaran, a, a trimaran, yeah. yeah. Um, but that to me, as an offshore cruiser, it just didn't work. As a liverboard, this is no. it, the thing we're looking for: a liverboard cruiser. These we're we're scoring um, our categories are designed to to make it obvious where a boat uh, kind of performs well in different categories for a liverboard cruiser when. And this is the thing, the Newell Trimorans, I know that they're, people are very intrigued about them and there's a lot of chatter on the internet about Newell Trimorans. I don't see how many people would be happy to live on that boat full-time, part-time. No, you'd be spending a lot of time in getting fixes done to it. Well, yeah. But and what I mean, sorry, what I mean is like the living space from yeah. a living point of view. Well, 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 okay, so one thing about the living space is because that boat is so wide, the cockpit it's got this kind of yeah. huge outdoor living area yeah you know the boat is eight meters wide and yeah. you just about get an eight meter cockpit yeah and the cockpit's really big and, and then it kind of all opens up to like it it's got some crazy name like it opens up like the, the barleys do so you've got like an indoor outdoor yeah, yeah. area yeah, yeah. but the finish was so poor it yeah. looked like like 1970s oil rig accommodation but uh, but this is it even had the finish been good the styling is very spartan so it but, but katana sometimes it, well, it doesn't matter whatever my point is that i i didn't like the styling or what the style that they were going for it was made even worse by the fact that it was so poorly put together yeah but okay so the start yes agreed um and one thing that people are going to say is well you know that finish is like that and you know it's all made like in lighter materials and it breaks because they're trying to save weight they're trying to save weight they're trying to save weight However, you look at Sea Wind, Outremer, um, even to a certain extent, Naughty Tech. You know, there are a lot of performance catamaran companies that are very able to put together a highly polished boat, a well-finished boat, in time for a boat show. Yeah. That has better finish. I mean, the Uchima review isn't out yet. No. Um, that one's coming. But Sea Wind, amazing. Yeah. Naughty Tech, you know, that's the really good, yeah. really good and finish that, and joinery. But I mean, like the finish of this was by far the worst finish of any, or actually the worst build quality of any boat that we saw at that yeah. boat. Show. In fact, any boat that I've ever seen. And this is, as we said before, such an extensive boat. Yeah. Like, how is there an excuse for that? I don't know, and I'm sure that we will get a raft of people telling us why, that they rushed it out, they rushed it out. Really, you know, put it this way, I would be, I'd love to see if they sold any 47s based on that. I cannot see how they could have sold any. 
I know what you might know. Well, but, anyway. Anyway, so listen. N Neil, if you're listening, then please uh, let us know. email us. <laughs> yeah, let us know. And, and you know what? As I said, I'm, we have discussed this. We're willing to kind of give them a pass and say, look, maybe they rushed it out. They were just under the cosh. Something went wrong. We will go and see... We another will go one. and see another one and review it and have a look at it again. I, I think because we can't believe how bad it was. Yeah. That, We're yeah. like, there must be a reason why it was that bad. Yeah. And so, let's give them a pass. We're not yeah. experts. We don't have to pay that. We're not experts. And like, I can only, we could only video what we saw. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, we'll, it, yeah, I, I agree with you 100%. I cannot believe how bad that boat was. Let's go back and give it another chance because surely, surely... No sane manufacturer is going to take that to a boat show. Yeah. So there's something, there's something not right. Yeah. I hope so. Okay. Well, there you go. So that is a was the <laughs> beautiful and slightly underwhelming, <laughs> underwhelming Neil Forty Seven. Um, thank you for watching that one. Um, so we have a few more left in this series. There is still Privilege Five Point Zero. Uh, there is still the Uchimere. And then we are going to continue the series. People have asked, are we going to continue? What are you going to do? Are you going to review Balance and Maverick and, uh, and Antares? Yes, we are. We are going to be at the Annapolis Boat Show reviewing all the ones that we did not get to see at La Grande Motte. And we may even throw a couple of monohulls in there just for yeah. comparison because we've been asked that a lot. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. We will be back soon with another one of our Catarine reviews. Goodbye.